This is shocking, because it's electrical. So we're doing a cargo trailer camper conversion build. This is our second one, and this one we're doing with Taylor and Eric, our daughter and her husband. We need shore power electrical to run the air conditioning, the lights, the refrigerator, the different necessities that you're gonna have in your cargo conversion. In this video, we are going to install all the electrical in the cargo camper. Disclaimer, we are not electricians. Uh, the stuff that we know how to do has come from helping other people, uh, watching videos ourselves, stuff like that. So if you are not an electrician, hire an electrician to do your job. This is for entertainment purposes only. We're gonna set up this camper for shore power, but we're also going to run some wires to have it set up for solar in the future if we wanna do that. So we didn't put solar in our last cargo trailer camper build, and we continue to see other people asking us why we didn't. And now we are ready to go ahead and tackle that. So if you know of a good solar um, package or system that would run a good, that would run a mini split AC, comment below and let us know because we're gonna be looking for that. On the inside, we're gonna do two separate light switches, one with a bank that works for the back of the camper and another bank that works for the front and in the nose cone. For the outside, we've opted to go with completely solar uh, lights that will also have uh, motion detectors on them as well around the entire uh, outside of the camper. Also on the inside will be plenty of outlets. It is a small space, but outlets are such a commodity. All right, so our shore power is gonna have a 30 amp cable that connects in to our box. We're gonna have four circuits on the box. Two are gonna be 20 amp, two are gonna be 15 amp. And uh, we're gonna run a mini split system for the air conditioner. Uh, the interior lights are gonna be LED and we're gonna have some GFCI outlets uh, uh, on the circuit so that creates GFCI throughout the camper. Okay, so these are the items needed so far for the project. Never know what you're gonna need later. Uh, we've got the electrical box, we've got the breakers, we've got three light switches, um, we've got the outlets, the shallow boxes, face plates, we've got actually GFCI outlets, covers for the GFCI outlets, button connectors and shrink wrap for um, 12 volt things. We've got some uh, self-tapping sheet metal screws to put the boxes into the aluminum studs. We've got uh, zip ties for zip tying bundles of wire together. We have got some 12-2 wire that we'll use to run the split system with. We have got some 10-2 wire that we will use to uh, wire the main box in with the shore power connector on the outside. We also have some 14-2 wire that we will use for uh, basically all of the, the normal circuits. All right, so these are the tools we're gonna need for the project. If anything else comes up, we'll let you know at the end of the video as well. Uh, jigsaw for cutting the holes for the outlets in the plywood. We've got some drill drivers for removing things and also drilling holes, uh, adding the uh, outlets to the studs. Uh, we've got some drill bits as needed, uh, some uh, measuring tapes, wire strippers, cutters, some razor blade, uh, razor knives. Got some uh, foil tape, screwdriver for putting together circuits and then these multi-snips that will cut just about anything, which works really well. Uh, some ends for the drills, and we also have a shop light as it starts to get dark or uh, when the light, if it's kind of cloudy, we can use that to keep things lit up. So let's get to it. Okay, so step one, we need to go inside and figure out where exactly we want the outlets, the different pieces, the main box coming in. Because we're gonna have to mount a spare tire, some different things like this, we need to know where everything is so that we can move forward appropriately. All right, so we've got a little bit of a plan already of where we want these outlets, so let's start lining some stuff up and see if it works. Yeah, yeah. Take it back to run. There is behind. And inside of that column, we could easily have... So what does this have to do with putting one on the outlet? We're making sure that the outlets are put in very strategic places because outlets are a commodity. So we decided to go with seven outlets and we have the one light fixture. So we've marked those and we're ready to go there. I have one question though, uh, something I wanna add. I think that we should do an extra outlet right here because we have a Jackery box and things that we charge that are like outside things. And if we had it here, then we could charge our outside gear just in our garage space. We're kind of doing some ciphering here to figure out where we might want to put the spare tire. Uh, because we need to have a 
piece that will mount through the camper and also a foot on the bottom that, uh, and he's our spare tire. <laughs> and uh, I got a spare tire right here too. Um, we're just trying to do a little bit of figuring so that when we put the 30 amp shore power, where do we want to put that along this wall, which determines where we put our box, several other things. Okay, we're all set to go. We have everything marked, all the outlets, all the light fixtures, and we're ready to start the next step. Yay! Now that we've got everything marked, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the plywood. But one of the things we're gonna do, as we remove it, we're actually going to make sure exactly where the stud is, mark some things, and then that way we can uh, mark and cut where our electrical boxes are gonna be now. And Eric has got a system for, you know, which, so we know which piece of wood goes where when we come back in, but that will also help us knowing which piece of wood we have. So uh, we're gonna, it's a little slower than just yanking everything off, but it's gonna save us time in the end. So what I'm basically thinking is we've got a pretty simple grid pattern going. We've got a driver's side, we've got a passenger side, we've got top, bottom, we've got back and front. So this would be driver, top, rear. Okay, quick pro tip. If you have what looks to be Torx head bit screws in your trailer, you will never find a Torx head bit that actually fits it. What it is, it's a square tip bit that actually fits these. So now what I'm gonna do is I know that my uh, box is gonna be here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it up against the stud, my box, my box. box. Oh, here, sorry. My box, there's my box. <laughs> Where's my box? Okay, so I'm gonna lay my box up here. So my box is gonna sit in here like this, okay? So then, then I need my marker. Got my marker here. So I'm gonna mark my, mark my box with my marker. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my box on here. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more because my little lip is sticking up there. And then I'm going to trace my box. Charlotte does not want you tracing my box. Mm -hmm. And so now I know where my box is gonna be uh, cut out. So, and I wanna give myself a little bit of leeway so I have a little bit of, Go on the outside of that line just to give myself a little extra. So then what I'll do is I'll actually mount this box right in here, okay? And I'm gonna actually screw the top piece in so I know where it goes. So it's, it's uh, it takes me a little extra time to get it off, but then I'm all set when I go to put it back on. you want it. You want them big enough to have a little bit of space around there so you don't get snagged up. And uh, so you always give yourself a little bit of a little bit of extra room. You don't want it super tight because wood flexes, it stretches, goes back and forth. So if it's moisture up when we go to put this back on, it wouldn't fit if it's too tight. So The next step is to run the electrical wire. To do this in a cargo trailer, you need to determine where your main box will be. Next, you will need to run the wire to the outlet box, leaving additional wire at the outlet and at the main box. We are running one full circuit at a time, daisy chaining one outlet to the next with the GFCI outlet as the first outlet in the circuit. When you're doing your, if you want to have your entire circuit be GFCI, the first outlet in the circuit, first thing it goes to has to be a GFCI outlet. Then if that trips, it trips them all, all the way. If it comes back and trips on the way back 
it basically it, it just makes everything GFCI and you only have to have one. So you just want to be thinking about how you're going to run your circuit so that you can maximize the uh, the way you're laying it out. And the way we're doing it in the trailer is, you know, in a house, we just go from place to place to place and we drill through and go to it. On the trailer, we're going back up to, to a place where we're going to hide all the wiring in across the top. So there is no, um, there is no, drilling through stuff. So when you're picking your GFCI outlet, you just want it to be one that's accessible. So we have several outlets that are potentially gonna have stuff stored in front of them. So we want the one that we pick to be the GFCI outlet, the buttons, to be somewhere in an open area that's easy to get to. We chose to use zip ties to loosely hold the wires across the top of the wall in the trailer. Why are we not running the wire behind this metal piece up here so that it's hidden and you're doing it up under okay. here? This metal piece right here is designed to hide wires, but it's for the wires that go to the outside lights. And what we're going to do is, is really, once we put insulation in the ceiling, there's no way to gain access to this. So actually what we're going to do is our wires will be all running down this, just underneath this channel, all the way down. But what we'll do is once we put the wall board, the insulation, there's going to be a little there's going to be a little piece that goes up over this that will be screwed in that you can actually remove and have access to these wires. We are installing all the wires running to the boxes vertically and next to the studs. We are doing this so that we know where the wires are as we add accessories to the outside of the trailer down the road. We will have no wires traveling horizontally except at the very top of the wall. We've decided to go ahead and not only run the wire, but wire up the outlets as we go along. That way we don't end up with a bunch of wires hanging all over the place and it'll make things easier. Now we're gonna wire the outlets as we run the electrical wire. Open the notch on the electrical box with a screwdriver. Pull your wire in, leaving extra wire. Use a razor knife to cut a slit in the center of the insulation around the wire. Peel back the insulation and the brown paper surrounding the wires and trim it off. Strip the end of the black and white wires to the appropriate size using the gauge and the back of the outlet. Attach the black wire to the brass slash gold colored screw or quick slot on the outlet. Attach the white wire to the silver colored screw or quick slot on the outlet. Bend the end of the bare wire into the shape of a candy cane and attach to the ground, which is the green screw on the outlet. And then you can screw the outlet into the box. So I'm gonna use foil tape right now too, because I don't have any, you can't put staples into aluminum. Uh, I'm gonna use the foil tape to hold the wiring in where I want it as we go up. I'm gonna to try to stay in the center of the stud as much as possible. Not that you really, uh, not that it might make that much of a difference, but just go along, put little pieces as I go. Next, you're going to cut the electrical box holes in the trailer for the outside electrical outlets. Then you're going to install and wire the outside electrical outlets using the same method as for the indoor outlets. We are going to put the outside cover on this outlet. And if you look at this outlet, it is a standard outlet. Now, you may say to yourself, be free Benson, that's not a GFCI outlet. But the first one in the circuit is GFCI, which makes all of them in the circuit GFCI. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these screws up, get them out far enough that I can get this cover on. If you get these covers, they have several different inserts you can put. And because I'm doing one that has that's set up like this, it actually just kind of snaps into place. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to actually um, pull these out a little further because I gotta get this rubber thing over top of them. I'm actually gonna take these screws completely out 
and in behind there are these little tabs. So I'm going to make sure I grab the tab out of there because I want to make sure they go through this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this back over top. I'm going to put this through the screw hole, screw hole. Then I'm going to take my tab, which I'm having a hard time grabbing a hold of, and I am going to put it back in onto this screw. Push it back on there so it holds it in place. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, now what I'm going to do is going to get these screws started into the box so that it's kind of holding in place. Next thing I'm going to do is take this and you can see in here where it starts in and then you can swing it over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push those in and then bring them over so that they're snugging up against it. And then while I'm holding it, I'm going to screw these in a little snugger. And then, that's, that's a harder one to get to. You gotta get to it from up here. So, it a little bit, okay. So now I wanna make sure that's good and snug on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bit out of here. I'm gonna put it in a hand screwdriver and just make sure that I've got it good and snug. So now, We've got some weatherproof uh, stuff for the outlet. So we're getting ready to wire up the uh, light switch. Now we don't have our lights in. We won't be able to put those in until we put our, um, what you call it? Uh, ceiling in because of the way they, those lights pop in, but we're gonna have it, it all wired and going to that. We will use one power source for both light switches. Be aware that light switches require more room in the box for wiring. For detailed instructions on wiring light switches, refer to a wiring diagram. When using shallow boxes, be sure to maximize the space and try not to pinch the wires. So we are going to hook our shore power up, but we want to be able to screw these screws. Uh, we're gonna screw in through these holes and we want to back it up with something that it can grab into other than just the sheet metal. So we cut a little piece of uh, uh, plywood with a hole in it and we've set that up against the side measured and and uh, used a sharpie to give us the, um, the outline of the hole. So then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot right in the center of the hole or in the center of there and I'm going to use that as my mark that I'm going to drill a pilot hole through. Anytime I drill through something that's got paint on it, I always put tape over it just so I don't score it up. Other, and another thing, a pro tip, fold over your little piece of tape so that way you don't have to dig at it to get it back off. All right, so what I did on the inside is I gave myself a pilot hole to the outside of the camper so that when I drill from the outside in, I've got a guide basically to, to guide the, the hole saw. If you look at a hole saw, it's got a drill bit in the center and then it's got the, the hole saw around the outside. So basically the spot where the, the center piece is gonna go through is already drilled. So that's gonna keep me in line with what I need as I'm going through. A lot of times when I'm done using a hole saw or something that's cutting through the outside, I like to use a blower and try to blow off as much of the debris as possible. If you think about it, those are just little razor sharp pieces of metal that can scratch the paint and other things. So I try to get as much of that off as possible so that I'm, I'm not rubbing up against it and scratching the paint. I've got Eric holding the piece of wood that has the hole in it that this is eventually going to fit into through the side. I'm going to place this on the outside going in and once it's through and it's in the correct spot, I'm going to drill some very tiny pilot holes where these screws are going to go into that piece of wood.
All right, so now that I've got this all in here, I'm going to pull it out and wire it up real quick. I wanted to make sure that we had it the way it needed to be, so I'll just pull these out. To wire up the shore power, it's pretty easy. You've got black, white, and green. Green is your bare copper wire, and then black, and then white. So it's actually pretty, pretty easy. Put that in there. Take your square head bit, which this one doesn't seem to be working real well. Go to the flat head. So we can get enough torque on that to crank it down real good. Okay, so that's the black. Next is going to be the white. And you're using 10 gauge wire, so it's 10 gauge wire is not super, super flexible. It's easier than using 8 gauge or 6 gauge, but it's also not super flexible like the 14 gauge is. Alright, so now I'm going to have Eric hold that again. I'm going to go back in, fish this wire through, which is way more wire than I need, but um, I'm going to fish it through and then screw this back onto the wall on the outside. Okay, when we made the wooden piece to hold on the shore power uh, block, I didn't realize, because it was on the outside, but the screws came through and they're sticking out. I don't want them to be sticking out to catch any wire. So I cut another block of wood the same size. We're gonna, I'm going to take those screws back out. He's going to put that piece of wood on there, so that way we won't have those sharp tips sticking out. putting a wire holder into the box. We are going to mount this box sideways. Um, the main wire from the shore power is going to come up in through the bottom and I want that to be secure so I am going to uh, put this little wire holder in place so that we can secure that. I'm going to put a piece of wood here on the wall to temporarily hold our box because we're going to screw the box onto the wood walls once they're back on. And we may leave this here as a backing as well, but right now I need something to hold the box secure so that we can get everything hooked up so we can check it. is I'm gonna strip this wire back. I'm gonna strip the insulation off. So I have all these wires and I'm gonna kind of place them in place and look at how long I want them because I don't wanna, I don't wanna cut too short and then find out I have to go back and redo some things. I'm going to now connect my uh, shore power wires in here. First thing I'm going to do is connect my my ground. All right, so I'm going to connect my neutral here, get her tightened in. Or my, excuse me, my ground. All right, and then my white will go into the neutral bar. Okay, now I'm taking the jumper and I'm jumping from the uh, black on one side of the bus bar to the black on the other side of the bus bar. Why do you have to do that? Because it has to have power on both sides 
and I don't have a four wire configuration coming in through the short power, just a three wire. So that's why we have to have a jumper. black will actually go to the breaker and the white goes to the neutral bar along with the ground that we bought are dual pole breakers. This is going to be a 15 amp, 15 amp circuit and we're going to put this on the very bottom. So the way these are going to go in is basically like this. So what I need is enough wire to connect it into here and not being too long, leaving myself a little bit of extra. Probably coming down and then up and then in. Myself a little extra. So we've got the shore power hooked up to the box. We've got the box box hooked uh, with the, the first circuit. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to plug in the shore power and then we're going to um, turn on the breaker, make sure that that first circuit is operable and make sure that we don't have any uh, major issues. Lisa? Lights on. So we've got three of our four circuits run. Our fourth circuit is for the split air conditioning heating system that we'll be putting in. So uh, we're gonna wait on that until we actually get the unit. Everything else went pretty well. Uh, we did have to do a jumper wire from one bus to the other. That was, uh, I wasn't quite sure how we needed to do that. So it took a little research to make sure we did that correctly because we only had three wire shore power. Um, everything went really well and uh, Eric got to do some electrical. Yeah, uh, my first time messing with any wires, uh, but it seems like it's all worked out pretty well so far. Uh, if you like these types of videos, go ahead and uh, check out, uh, click on the video on the screen and check out our channel where you can find more videos just like this. Also, if you found value in this video, we'd love it if you would uh, like this video and subscribe. Remember, stepping outside the box, doing things outside of your comfort zone, really uh, learning how to do new things, all of it allows you to be free. We'll see you in the next video when we do the split system AC heating system and end our final fourth circuit. There's a reason why I'm turning my back to you. Why? Because <laughs> I wanted to cut it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all in me. I have cool.
I saw for daddy cooking, he snatched it. Hold on. If I get lit up on this one, don't forget to be free. But if I get lit up, don't wire this way I wired it. For more information, you can visit our website at www.BeFreeBenson.com. You'll see all kinds of tips and tricks and all of the links to the items that we used in this video. The link for the website will be in the description below as well. 